to God be the glory. Yes, Acts 2.42. We're jumping right into it. Today, I want to encourage us for your Dane disciples. Amen? From the book of Acts, chapter 2.42, which reads in the King James Version, and they continued steadfastly in the gospel's doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers we are preordained disciples here it is they are going to continue in very important we were preordained with it you're here today and we are functioning in what we call a cell capacity we came out of the sanctuary synagogues the mosque we have lived our lives witnessing how muslims would any way they are at the time they would bow down before god and turn that sacred ground in front of them into a sanctuary anoint that ground and wherever they are wherever they've been, that spot becomes sanctified. We have also lived to see those of us who came out of the church, out of Christianity. We go to the house of God to worship, to praise. We also go to the church to testify. We see how there is a tradition that we have all been blessed to keep. We have all been a part of in trying to marry to that tradition. So we're witnesses. Let me speak to Christians around the world. We are witnesses that prior to COVID-19, we gathered as often as we could in one assembly. Today, we're not quite yet out of the COVID-19 era. We today are gathered here. We call it the cell ministry. Amen. In homes. Now, you here, I here, we already know that this was the initial intent of God, using small things to be a part of hugeness, mega. You ever seen something that is smaller than any other seed? But when it is full grown, it is larger than the garden plants. And we will be studying more how and expounding more about how it has always been God intent and the apostles. And that's why we are here in the book of Acts 2.42. Amen. Hallelujah. You can read it with me. You can say, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayer. That's you. That's me. This word was spoken. It's amazing how we are so fascinated by ancient of old that what has been written will serve eternally. Amazing. How Paul and the apostles knew that their assignment was to continue preparing the brethren, the children of God. Remember, we are all children of God. Whosoever will, listen to know. 
that you were preordained, preordained as disciples. Mm -hmm. You are preordained disciples. If you don't know anything else after today, you will be building up on this. And God is going to allow his exponential spiritual magnificence to expand. Amen. What you're willing to receive. It is Paul and the apostles who prepared this, prepared the way for us to take over. But if we were to do some historical background, teaching and that's why telling you that your disciples material you are preordained material of the discipleship you are the preordained <laughs> so you're now manifesting it and if you're not manifesting it yet jump in telling you that may be news for some of you or confirming to others to you what you were already told by someone else what perhaps the Holy Spirit may have already told you. And now I'm only confirming it. But that is only the proclamation of the good news onto you. The responsibility that you and I have now It's like a stock, it just increased. Now we know what our title may be. For some people, it's discipleship. For some, it's evangelists. So some, it's the shepherding, the fivefold ministry. For some, but hear what the Lord is saying to all of us disciples. We are starting at a particular place. We start off as disciples. I know in some churches we start off even as evangelists. Amen. Missionary directors. Amen. After you follow, now you can lead. But the Lord is saying this discipleship that we were preordained with. Thank God of Paul and his apostles who broke it down to us. Is of one accord. One, we have lived long enough to see how God uses one and oneness. Amen. We know what one means to God. God is one for all. <laughs> God uses one for many. You and I have an assignment. P-H-A or preordained heritage assignment in the midst of our PHP, our Preordained Heritage Portfolio. And we're supposed to execute it towards our PhD, our Preordained Heritage Destiny. We must know what Paul and the apostles intended for us to know. Why? Because the disciples were following before they were leading. God has all the writings in the whole of the Bible, in the scroll, in the Old Testament, and the New that all lead up to oneness. It's, it's just marvelous how God would have someone remind us of over here when the disciples were stiff-necked, when they were disobedient, when they couldn't get it. Huh? You remember that time? Remember when we just became saved and they said that the things you used to do, you'll do no more? And we couldn't understand it because the very thing we were doing, we kept on doing. Little do we remember that it is going to be a process. 
the disciples followed. And if we don't have on our right spiritual lens, we would think that they were eternally stiff naked. I want to bring your attention to when Jesus is getting ready to leave earth and he got to the place on the mountain he prayed and the disciples were sleeping and he gave his final farewell prayer we call it the gospel of John 17 my favorite scriptures to you how Jesus prayed and saturated the air, the atmosphere, amen, over his disciples. Yes. Jesus prayed and saturated, spoke, <laughs> injected, charged talk about a charge charge the atmosphere with the posture of the disciples and the atmosphere obeyed that by the time he finished praying and they awoke it was finished before it was even finished hmm? so being reminded that we are stiff-necked, stiff-necked and hard-hearing and stubborn and disobedient is true of the flesh. Of the flesh. <laughs> we are also reminded that we are born in sin and shaped in iniquity. That's Psalm 51. Five, five, one, five. Remember that, right? The book of Psalm. Amen. We know that we were born in sin and shaped in iniquity, but watch this. Jesus, who knows us before we were born, who was with the creator from the beginning of time, who was created to be sent in our time knows us too he knew us then he knows us now spoke things as not as they were but spoke them into being the way how god preordained them you got to read the gospel of john 17. you i know everyone who is my fellows my pupils you know it so well you know when i Learn, I give to you all that I got from ESW, Reverend Ahania Williams, I have given to you. Amen. He gave it to me, I gave it to you. The disciples got it from the Christ. The disciples were giving it out to whosoever will. Now we know that the gospel was continuing through them. And there was a process of something else happening simultaneously, which is that God was also doing the supernatural ex expansion. You join me on the encyclical, you will hear more about that when we do our after party, amen, dissertation after each class and during the week as well. The book called the encyclical, with an S to encyclicals, by Jeff Reeds, the books have put us in order. Something that we could just easily use as a tool to follow as we continue to steadfast, and they continued steadfastly, amen, in what? The Apostles Doctrine. What is the Apostles Doctrine? We get to this place now where we call it a word, a Greek word, you will call it the dedicate. But all that simply means is that the apostles were now writing their letters and talking about their individual gospel experiences and sharing it with the community. 
So he asked me now, out of the dedicate, we're going to go, we're moving backward. What is this dedicate? The dedicate is a systemic order that the disciples organized, put forward in order for the new disciples to come on board. Remember how Jesus had to do it for them. When they were stiff necked and stubborn and lost and confused and couldn't hear what she was what Jesus was saying in, in the parables, Jesus had to go ahead of them and press the insurance button and say, Here is how I insure it into your will. I give this to you now. Amen. He spoke that prayer and life became in them. Watch this before I talk about the charisma. Let me stay right here with the dedicate and show you this. Jesus now, who his time is about to be up on earth. Amen. Also, now he's going to do something else. He, he kept on telling them, you know, I have to leave. But they were not listening. They didn't want to ask the right question. Well, you know, I, I said I'm leaving. What question would you ask if I were to say to you that I'm leaving? Your pupils, right? What would you ask? You don't want to know where I'm going. Yeah. So Jesus decided to continue the conversation, the dialogue. And he reminds them that where I go, you go. He's praying, saturating the atmosphere. And then he says to them, he says, you can always continue to ask whatever you want in my name. And my father will give it to you because you now know and you believe. Is that true? It wasn't true then. They did not know and they did not believe that, that they were going to be used according to divine Definition, divine assignment. They didn't know to what extent they were going to be used. But Jesus spoke it into place. And so now, here I am. Amen? There you are. And Jesus let them know that the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, I will leave with you. Jesus, knowing and knowing all things as he is, did a follow-up. Say, listen, I'm going to take you to the upper room. And who was not there is this apostle called Paul. But Paul is like the you and me. We came after. So we are like Paulines. And that's what we have in common when we love Paul. And that's one of the reasons why we love Paul so much. Because Paul came after all this charismatic community was being formed in the eschatologized state. In the there and then. Like in the here and now. Paul got revelation that gelled us together. Talk about the Gentiles uh, mm, coming in, sitting in fellowship <laughs> with the Jews, the Hebrews, uh, the righteous, you know, followers of Christ. Remember, they were all Hebrew people. Jesus is a Jew. God used that one community, that one nation, that one culture, amen, that one language and exponentially expanded it. And that was God's intention from the very beginning. We've been preaching that all these years, even before COVID. Here come Jeff Reed, putting the icing on the cake. Jesus did something else, brothers and sisters, to ensure this gospel continuation. But it didn't start with me, nor with you. And it also didn't start with Paul. It started in the upper room when he said, I'll meet you there. He's already ascended and he came back the Holy Spirit to reveal to his disciples in the upper room. Amen. And when they got there, Jesus saw that he had to do it again. He had to be, a, he had to do what we call a pouring on the outside, on the inside. Ignited us with the Holy Spirit because <laughs> everything that God gave Jesus, Jesus gave to us. He left us and he was empty. He emptied out everything that God wanted him to leave with humanity. Here is what God has for you. And so he went up in the upper room, meet me there. And he poured out the Holy Spirit and they became on, they, they went on fire. They caught on fire in a spiritual manner. And now the 
unction of the spirit of tongues, uh, the Holy Spirit on the outside, hallelujah, reigning on the Holy Spirit on the inside and the ignition between the Holy Spirit on the outside and the Holy Spirit on the inside brought them on one accord. What he preached in the Gospel of John 17, eschatologized, was right there and then. From that moment on, let me read to you something that is in the same Acts 2.42. Listen. Verse 39, so this verse 42 is like in a sandwich, right? We have 42, we have 39, and then I'm going to end this framework at 45. For the promise is unto you, you, and you, oh yeah, it's unto you. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off even as many as the lord our god shall call you heard the word call the calling of the discipleship we're all preordained disciples but not all of us is aware of what our calling is. You don't want to agree with that? You think you're just a disciple because I say so? Whatever God is discovered doing now, God has been doing forever, eternally. God, is even, God even has a number in us that for the last 40 years of your life, if you were to live from zero to 100, 40 years of your life, looking back the last 40 years, will be the new and improved branding of you. Mark what age you are and get to 40, 53 years old. Brand new you. Keep on evolving. Not the same old you, brand new you. Disciples forever, discipleship. The disciples who Jesus presented to God, are given now the power of the Holy Spirit, the charge to go for. Again, I can show you and prove to you the Holy Spirit on the inside working and the Holy Spirit on the outside. Amen. The Holy Spirit on the outside working with the Holy Spirit on the inside. Inside, outside, outside, inside. We see it in the Gospels of John when John, the Baptist, baptized Jesus in water. And when Jesus came forth, we see the dove on the Christ. Acting as a representation of the anointing of God on the outside. God coming to say, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. This is my beloved children in whom I'm well pleased. The calling comes now when you have been amongst your elders and, and those who are the discipling, who have already accepted discipleship as a form of leadership to go forward and proclaim the word of the Christ. The call, the callers, amen, are not calling you, but God first called them. And God will call them because of what someone prayed, the functionality of the word prayer. You know, God is not going to do this himself. We are a communal being now. We are a communal community. Great I am needs you to work in a community. This word, the call, is what you're sitting here listening to. Not that you are just being called. Uh, let me see if I can fix it, Lord. As the Lord our God shall call. This call... You can see it as a restoration, a restoration of that which was dormant and dead inside of us. The Holy Spirit lives it in us. The Holy Spirit gave us our preordained heritage packages, but they're dormant until what? A sister, a brother, a praying mother, a grandmother, amen, comes in, speaks. 
it out over our lives. The call have always the call has always been there. God is calling you right now. You won't remember that that Macedonian call was not just given here; it was given before we were born. God needs us. Think about that. Ha! Hallelujah. This call is in Acts two forty two. The reminder of what you're sitting here right now, feeling the call, the reminder of this call. Amen. Hallelujah, the call. The call comes through you and me. And so going back into the early first century of the apostles, when they left that room, they were the call. You know, <laughs> The formation of the disciples were charged. They became exactly who the Christ said he prayed for in the Gospel of John 17. Now those disciples will meet up with Paul and together they will merge and marry and continue the dedicate which means their work, their gospel, combined with Paul's. So the dedicate is this body of work of the apostles, including Paul, talking about a charismatic community. The charisma now is that which pertains to the work, the life, the call of Jesus. The good news that he came to present about our Father, God Almighty. The Christ, the manifestation of God in the flesh, a living flesh, comes to remind us <laughs> God is a serious God. God comes to make us know who he is. He comes to let you. God reminds us who he is. As he walked with Moses, and Moses said, you know, if you, the people are staying that stiff naked, so if you don't go with me, I'm not going. Yeah, so God did go. But not before God told us. Let me tell you who I am. Amen? And he sure did tell us who he is. Thou shalt have no other God before me. Thou... Same God, now in the flesh of Jesus leaving no stones unturned no more it is finished this is it amen he left no stones unturned the same god the same christ who came to remind us about our interconnectivity our inseparability and also the promises that we made God before we came into the flesh. <laughs> God is an awesome God. Trusting no one else with the messages that he gave us before we came into the womb. The womb. The mother's womb. Uh, Inside of the mother's womb, you will find the egg. The womb is now the place where conception is defined by God. The God on the inside of the woman, the God on the inside of the man. How often is it misconceived as just the topic that says that we were just born in sin and shaped in inequity? That's Psalm 51, 5. How often, amen, are we just at that one place where that's all we want to remember about our wonderful, perfect praise self, preordained, royal, immortal, amen, self, spiritual, external, external, amen, living eternally, self. This external self, this flesh, living eternally because of the Holy Spirit that dwells inside of us. 
We often want to remember that, but we don't want to see that God had to come himself and remind us that you're more than just flesh living inside of your flesh. Reverend Williams once preached that we are dust plus. Amen. The Holy Spirit occupies us, but the Holy Spirit is that speck of light that lives in the darkness, color, flesh. But the Holy Spirit is there. So at conception, what happens? The immaculate Holy Spirit is present. Not the one that you always remember. Not only the Psalms 51, 5, born in sin and shaped in iniquity. Behold, I was shaped in iniquity and in my sin did my mother conceive me. Amen. Ecclesiastes 7, 20 says, For there is not a just man upon earth that doeth good and sinneth not. That same egg and that same sperm that same ecclesiastes 720 and psalms 51 5 are going to be met with <laughs> in the beginning god said let us create man and genesis 1 it's met with genesis 1 26 and 28 that says let us make man in our image whose image Almighty God, the great I am. Oh, glory to God. So, <laughs> you are a disciple, preordained. My job is to just jog your memory. And I thank God for using me to remind you of something you already know. You already know that you are preordained to do good. You already know who you are. Our jobs are to become like the 12 disciples we are now, the disciples are preparing us to do what? Continue how? Steadfastly to do what? Amen? In the doctrine and fellowship. Everything that was true to Jesus. So, the doctrine is Christ's doctrine. The fellowshipping now, amen, is what we do together. We come together. We have church and we fellowship amen and how they fellowship then they had real meals real dinner and though they were being persecuted and have to have been running from place to place they had you and all the new believers who were in fire who realized that they had an eternal Need by God. When you get that breakthrough, depression will flee. When you get that breakthrough, suicidalness will flee. You see, what happened? What happened with Jesus when he who betrayed Jesus, he went to suicide. Why? He didn't get the vision. He didn't understand it. I'm telling you, they were stiff-necked. He didn't get that. And so he decided to commit suicide. Amen? He decided to commit suicide. You know who we're talking about, right? Amen? Now, when you get how much God needs you, how God preordained you from the beginning to continue with what Jesus just came 2,000 years to tell us, Jesus, God came down 2,000 years to tell us what he's always been trying to pour and pour into all the prophets of old. The last prophet I want to bring to your attention, I mean, he's my joy, I mean, is found in the book of 2 Kings chapter 5. And the prophet had an assistant by the name of Jehazi. That prophet represents you and me being the best of ourselves without understanding the Christ because the Christ didn't come yet. So over and over and over and over, God chose the prophet to be all that they could be. 
But if you read, if you don't mind, I'll go and get it for you. But if I were to jump to verse 26, 2 Kings 5, 26. But the prophet said to him, Was not my spirit with you when the man got down from his chariot to meet you? Is this the time to take money? Is it? The time to accept clothes? Is it? Or olive groves and vineyards? Or flocks? Hmm? And herds? Male and female? Slaves? Is this the time? Jehazi? Naaman's leprosy will cling to you and your descendants forever. Then Jehazi went from the prophet presence. Elijah was being the best that we could be. He is the one of the most perfect prophets the most anointing of prophets, the one who we all want to be like. But prior to Christ's coming, we have to make a distinction now. We have to make an addendum to that. We want to be like Elijah plus. And that's why we hold on to the Christ so much. Because when Jesus, the book of Acts, it says, you have the permission to judge the living and the dead. Jesus did not. Constantly asking for forgiveness of us on the cross. Forgive us, human beings. He said, forgive them for they knew not what they do. Constantly advocating before God, calling things that are not as though they are. Telling God all the things that God created us as created us as not the way we were shaped by our iniquities and our the sins of our parents and so this Christ this Jesus will leave no stone unturned this Jesus will blow that air and said mm, the breath of air the pneuma and said Mm, be ignited, be remembered, be formed according to how God preordained you. Those were those who call themselves the prophet. And that's when we say in the doctrine, that's why when we say in the book of Acts 42, and they continued steadfastly, in the apostles' doctrine, stop. They were being Christ-like. They were talking about Christ. They received the assignment, like I'm charging you today. Receive your assignment. You were preordained disciples. They were living it. And the church is now going to grow and grow and grow and multiply because you and I became the church. And whenever we were just formed whenever we receive that good news of whose we are and where we're from. All that Jesus embodied and taught, the legacy of the Christ, all the love ethic of the Christ, that's what my husband always call it. As we understand the love ethic of Jesus, as soon as we get it, we go, but we go with a doctrine. We go with the rules. Here's what we're going to do. We don't say our own thing. We don't create our own news. We don't say what is not said. Unless the Holy Spirit reveals something to us. We try not to embellish. You know, we admonish ourselves from embellishing. But we go and we say what does say the Lord. Amen. And that's what you'll find here in 242 of the book of Acts. The conjunctions are important. Now remember this is exegeted. In English from an old language to, to English so the conjunctions are essential 
as we understand more who we are today based on the finished work of the Christ. The doctrines of the apostles simply mean the kerygma of the Christ. The doctrine of the apostles cannot be separated and presented in any church as just a complete set. You have to take the, the doctrines, which we would use another word to explain that, the dedake, and we will combine it with the kerygma, which is the proclaimed actual work of the Christ. You look at Paul. Paul started writing. Amen. The writing of the letters came before the writing of the Gospels. Amen. Very important. Because before the Gospel was just being preached orally. Paul took it to that literal, literal state and started writing it down and writing them letters. And then he was joined by others. Together, the kerygma, the proclamation of the Christ, and the dedicate, the work of the disciples, are connected. We cannot talk about this work of the Christ, amen, the teaching of the Christ and his disciples, the way of the Christ and his apostles without having these two together. Amen. You today are being dispatched and charged. Hallelujah. Because you were preordained, not because I say so. If you don't believe me, check with your Holy Spirit self. Preordained to do that which a Christ had to have come to do. Consequently, we need to take a look at 2 Kings 5. Amen. Starting at 26. When the prophet Elisha. Hmm. Amen. Elisha was on his throne. We want to be like Elisha plus. We want to be like the Christ. In the New Testament, it teaches us how we can become the Elisha of this world. Prophetic and have our apostolic ministry like Reverend Wright is encouraging us to be a part of the apostolic leadership, to build leaders to do exactly what Acts 2.42 has commissioned us to do. What he commissioned the community to do, then he's commissioning us to do now. So we're going to continue with the formation and the building of the church, which is the spreading of God's kingdom on earth, which is exactly what Jesus came to remind us to do. That is first and foremost, as we live our lives, Amen. Vicariously. Don't forget what God called you to do first. Don't forget your preordained assignment that you were given first. Don't forget your God. Keep your God in that place. Talk to the baby in the womb. And let us continue to encourage each other. As you see a new disciple struggling, encourage him and equip them with the content. Hallelujah. Of the doctrine. The apostle doctrine is the same doctrine of the Christ. Don't ever stop reading the Gospel of John 17. Jesus is hovering over his disciples. It is finished. The more we learn about Jesus, the more we will learn that we were preordained to be just like the Christ. Now we know there is only one Christ. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world, this world without end, that God gave God's only begotten Christ. And we're sons and daughters of God, but God only has one Christ, the Yeshua of the seven continents. I richly bless the word of God in your lives. I bless this pronunciation of the fulfillment and the continuation as you continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, in breaking of bread, feeding people, learn all that the church, the early church did in the name of God because of the instructions of the Christ and prayers. There's so much too, but I won't 
do any more here. This is your assignment. Whenever you want to know one of the preordained titles that you have, this is the, the word for it. This is the segment. Preordained disciples. Amen. The song said that I created, it says, call me by my name. Disciple of Jesus. Amen. God's richest blessing continues in your life. As you continue in this charismatic community to uphold as soon as you get through the doors and you're strong in your word, I anoint you and I commission you under the grace of the Holy Spirit, the charge of God and all the teachings that I've been taught. Amen. And if you want to know more about my schooling and what I'm doing, I invite you to ask a question. But in all that I have, I charge you to live your eschatologized life right now as you were preordained to be disciples of the Christ. Amen.